Git work trees have become an invaluable piece of my workflow. It allows me to switch between contexts as quickly and easily, isolate breaking changes, do code review quickly and easily without disrupting my work, and more. In this video, I'm going to break down how I set up my Git work trees and how I use them to stay productive and effective. So let's get into it. All right, first I want to shout out my friend Nick Nisi. He's the one that kind of got me into this and start working with it. Um, it's been a couple of years now, and so I don't follow the same conventions as him, but this is a great read if you want to just get started with the basics. And first, the main decision is where do you clone repositories on your machine? I like to keep it simple, and so I have a directory called C from my home directory. C is for code, and it is what holds all of my projects. Something I'll note is that not every repository needs to be using the work tree system. And so I recommend personally that if a project is simple, if a project is strictly for research purposes, meaning you might just want to be reading someone else's code, or if it's a project you don't visit very much, where you only go to it and do things, you know, every now and then, once in a blue moon, then you probably don't need to set up this structure because you'll find that it is more complicated, there are more steps. And so really what I would recommend is if you want to use Git work trees, you should first think about, um, do you do code review? Uh, do you create breaking changes like dependency upgrades or maybe even architecture changes um, that are hard to switch back and forth from? Um, as well as mono repos. So if you have a lot of like sub projects within one repo, uh, this is an incredibly useful tool for being able to specify different areas of the code by separating them out into work trees. And then finally, if you just have to do code switching a lot, like you're patching on production or you're you know, doing a hot fix or you're working on multiple branches throughout the same day, and you may have states that are incomplete. If you're a full-time programmer, you should probably be using work trees. And I'll show you some of the pros and cons along the way and how I specifically set it up, um, especially for using good session management so that you can navigate between all of these different types of projects and code and different areas of responsibility all in uh, a seamless way. And so going back to my example, you'll see here that I have projects like HA, which is um, Home Assistant, and I have projects like OB for my OB, uh, Obsidian work, which I'll be talking more about in the future. So uh, do subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about Obsidian and how it can help you uh, be a better pro programmer. My day job is Nutility, and so I use NU. And so you'll see a theme here, HA for Home Assistant. There are certain kinds of projects that I love work trees for, um, and I will come up with a very short and brief name. Um, and so for the sake of today, I want to actually show off how I would set this up using my Sesh project. So I do code review, I have different features going on at once sometimes. So Sesh is a great example. We're gonna make a directory and call it Sesh. And so this is the basic um, directory that will hold all of the work trees. So when you create work trees, it creates a folder in your computer. Now, technically this folder could live anywhere, but I would recommend each project have a parent folder that has a simplified name like we spoke about. And so we're gonna go into this project and we're gonna get a uh, clone bear. Uh, and then I'm gonna pb paste. And then we're gonna call this dot git. So some people use dot bear and it's an old convention I used to use, but I like just naming it .git directly. And so pbpaste is just going to put in the clipboard contents so that I don't have to type out that command every time. This just always shows up in my shell history. And so now we'll see uh, the .git folder lives here. And what you'll notice is, uh, let's just ls it. All it is is what you would typically see in a Git project you know, hooks and info and refs and, and the head and all of that, the config file. Um, and I find that it personally is helpful to be here. And then we'll get uh, work tree add main. And so now that will do, what we'll do is it will run that uh, script and create a version of the project. Um, so this is the project living in main. And so that's the main directory. 
Now I may want to do something like uh, git work tree add, I'm working on a TUI feature. And so I may create a separate one called TUI. And the most basic version of this is now when you're working on main, you can go to main. And if you're working on a feature branch, you can create a feature branch. And if we wanted to reference um, an older version of the project, we're on V2 now. So if we wanted to work on V1, uh, we could also do the same thing there. We could check out V1. And so I'm hoping that you're finding some sense of how this works. I find that I like to have a git uh, work tree, one called review. And so review is for code review specifically, and I'm gonna show you how I set that up. But what's really useful is when we start working with Sesh. And so Sesh is a session manager I use for Tmux. And so when I go to C slash Sesh, we'll see that I have main to review. And if I pick something like main, we'll see that my session name is named sesh slash main. And so one of the conventions of sesh is that it's really easy for sesh to determine that parent folder. And so then if I do things like uh, my day job, right, I go to this one a lot, I know that I'm looking at utility slash main. And if I want to be working on Obsidian and I wanna work on a specific project, I know that this is the Obsidian Mon you know, work tree environment, the main work tree, plugins, and then this is a specific plugin that I would be using. So this is a mono repo space. Um, and so we'll go back to Sesh. So now uh, we'll do this again. Sesh main. And now I might want Sesh TUI. And I can work on the TUI. And if I wanted to cross compare things like to uh, the first version of Sesh and the new version of Sesh, I might want to do that with like a clone command, right? And so I may want to compare things uh, by switching between two different team accessions at once. And then for code review, let's just go ahead and set this up. I use a tool called uh, GH Dash. GH Dash is a really great TUI for interacting with issues and uh, pull requests in GitHub uh, in the terminal. And so if we want to, I can just show you how I do this uh, in my dot files. I will make sure to map. In this case, I'm gonna map joshmanesky.com, or uh, this is my username slash sesh, so this is the repo. We're gonna map to this folder. And then in my sesh config, we're gonna have, uh, let's see, sesh reviews. We can create a new session, call it sesh reviews, give it a path to that place. And so this is the work tree that we created. And then the startup command is gh dash. So now if I wanna do sesh reviews, we can see that I'm involved in a PR. I'm gonna make this a little easier for us to read. And if I wanted, I can hit the space bar to check out a branch. And we'll see that my Tmux session uh, tooling tells me that the you know this branch is checked out now, and I can do what I want to do. So if I want to take a look at this guy's code, I could take a look at it, look it over. I also really like to use a tool called Octo, um, and so I have a custom binding that makes it so if I push capital O here, it will open this up in a tool called Octo. I can start a review with some key bindings. Actually, we need to resume because I've I've been working on a review already and I can then, you know, do all of the things. Uh, you'll actually see Octo allows me to see comments uh, that I put on this. I can add comments as well in here. And again, this is a work tree called Sesh Review. So now if I wanna go back to uh, Sesh Main, I can do that pretty easily and be working on the things that I'm working on. Uh, something to note is that I really like to use uh, lazy git and I have it bound to command G. And so now I can manage branches, uh, look at remote branches. Uh, there is a simple work tree feature that's pretty useful for sesh and go through histories, commits, you know, commit uh, stage and commit files, all the things that we do in Gitland. 
it's tre treated pretty much the same. And something to note is that you can't check out the same branch twice in a work tree environment. So if I go back to the review, uh, if I go back to the review and I try to check out main, uh, we're gonna see that LazyGit won't let me do that. It often will ask if I wanna switch. If I do something more simple like git uh, checkout main, we're gonna see that it's already checked out in another work tree. And so what I typically do is um, I just, let's go back to main. I just create underscore main as a really useful workaround for me. Um, and that's a branch that I can very easily, if I wanna check out main or fetch main and deal with you know, what's the latest here in a specific area, um, I like to use this underscore convention uh, to help me sort of manage things. Um, something I'll note as well is that I don't like using um, the name of the work tree as a branch name specifically. Those can get kind of complicated. Uh, I really prefer to keep things really simple. And so as an example with work, um, you'll see that I have work trees, uh, this add build page is a feature that took many pull requests to complete. PM portal is an area of our business that I like to go to and work on. Uh, UI is a specific package, UI package, and I often am able to work on the UI package independently. So if I'm doing UI work specifically, and I just wanna get, uh, you know, let's say we're updating a button or we're adding an icon, I will go to this work tree and all of my tooling and my autocomplete and my file picker all show me things that are in the UI. Uh, so like what, well, I'll just show you, uh, we'll just go new UI. And this is my first result, right? It's part of, uh, let's go here to this one. So UI packages UI, this is the UI package. When I'm in this work tree, we'll see that this is the UI stuff that I last touched. So I was working on this feature last. So FFF files, I might make a whole other video on that. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see what I'm doing with file pickers nowadays. That's sort of the main benefit that I get out of, uh, same thing with the Obsidian stuff that I was showing off. Uh, when I'm working on the wallpaper feature, I check out the work tree and then I dive into the mono repo and I'll check out a specific project. Um, and if any time I want to go to the parent, which is really useful for things like turbo repo, I will hit command nine. Uh, it's just what I happen to have it bound to. And it will find the root of the work tree. In this case, it's, you know, OB slash main is the, is the root of this uh, Git repository. Um, and that makes it easy for me to do sort of global things when I want to do global work. And so I know I'm talking a lot and I'm saying a lot of things and I'm speaking to all of the different pieces of this. For now, what I'll say is when you have to context switch and move between different you know, pieces of your work throughout the day, work trees are great at that. If you're a maintainer uh, and you have you know, to look at different people's code in different time periods, you can create work trees for those different stages of a project. Um, and then for me, uh, if I'm working in a big node based, you know, node modules in PM type world, I use PM PM a lot and I'll probably make a video on that soon. I like to create a work tree and work on it um, for like a dependency update. Cause as you know, if you were to switch back to a different branch, you have to rerun uh, npm install. And if you're in a mono repo space, it's kind of, it's not cheap to just npm install, make a change, npm install again to try to revert it and go back and forth and be like ping pong. Um, and so I think that it's important to note that you are responsible with how much wasted time you have in trying to deal with this. Um, something I will call out and that I recognize is a problem is that at least in this case, it's probably not a big deal. Um, these aren't going to be very big on their own, but when you start installing dependencies, you are now sort of duplicating your work. And so tools like PMPM prove really useful because you can do some optimizations with your hard drive using symbolic links and hard links and things like that. But typically you're, you, you may not have that option. And so every time you do this, it's similar to cloning the project 
every single time. And so you end up with this sort of bloat on your hard drive. So there's a level of responsibility to have here. And there are some good opportunities to clean up your work, especially if you do the feature branch thing and you create lots of work trees. As you finish that work, you want to make sure that you prune that work. And so if, to the end of this video here, I want to talk about a tool called Tree Kanga. So one of my moderators for my Discord server, Garrett, uh, shout out to Garrett. He's working on a project that is specifically for um, optimizing your workflow. And so what I've done is I like using Tree Kanga for a few different reasons. Uh, the main one being that it's easy to clean up your work after the fact. Uh, so I actually have a config here for Sesh already. And we can tell it the default branch, give it the working tree target. Um, I like to list my, my items out as directories, but the list feature also works with branches, if that's your style. And then really importantly, you have to make sure to tell Tree Kanga that the bare repo name uh, is this, right? And that's what we talked about earlier in the video. And so if we're just going to use this tool, uh, we can list, and there's our list. Uh, and there's a really cool prune feature. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, we want to delete, and we can say stale. And so everything that isn't pointing to a parent, uh, or it, you know, sometimes you have orphaned branches where you create a pull request, you delete the branch once you've completed the pull request, um, it's considered orphaned. And so if we were to do like the 2e branch as an example, that can be selected. Um, and when you hit that, um, it will remove that branch effectively. And so one, just keep it simple. Um, start where it makes sense to you, learn the muscle memory, and then start using Sesh to help navigate your different sessions appropriately. And if you have mono repos, you can be really specific and targeted with, you know, this work tree is for this specific area of my project, and your sessions can get you to exactly where you need to be quickly. Um, and then more importantly, this whole idea of the day job, especially requiring a lot of context switching, um, you can comfortably name these work trees in a way that gets you through features. Maybe it's multiple branches through a feature set. Um, maybe it's a specific area of the code base that you know that you have to go back to. Maybe it's dependency changes. But as a whole, uh, work trees have really changed my relationship with Git and made it uh, not so frustrating um, when I have a lot to do. Uh, and then more importantly, when I reach for this is specific. So when it's a big project, when it's a complicated workflow and work set, then I use work trees and otherwise I don't. And I still do have plenty of repositories that are simple and they're just cloned once and they're used, you know, sometimes. Uh, but overall, I'm a huge fan of work trees. Uh, I hope that you give it a try. Uh, in the comments, if there's something I missed or there's something, there's some nugget that you want to share about how uh, work trees are working in your favor, or maybe you like the Primogen's uh, NeoVim plugin, whatever it might be, I'd love to talk more about work trees in the comments. Um, and much more videos are coming on developer productivity in the terminal. So please do subscribe and like this video if it helped you out. And I'll see you in the next one.